Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about second language acquisition and some of the key principles that researchers have identified as being important for content teachers of multilingual learners to think about, to know, and to apply to their classroom practice. These researchers are Tamara Lucas and Ana Maria Villegas and they've identified five key principles, so we'll go over each of them right now. The first one is that conversational language proficiency is fundamentally different from academic language proficiency. One of the reasons it's really important for teachers to understand this is because you may have students in your class that can speak to you conversationally with great ease, maybe even without an accent. And so it may appear that they have very high levels of English proficiency, and they do in their conversational ability. But being able to converse in English is not the same as being able to engage in academic language in English. This is true in other languages as well. I myself am proficient in speaking German, my conversation proficiency is very high, but in academic context, I actually very much struggle and I have a bachelor's degree in German and have spent many years studying and living, living in Germany. So the two proficiencies are very different and it's important for us to recognize that so that we can support students as they develop their academic English proficiencies and build on the assets they bring with strong conversational proficiencies. It's also important to recognize that if a student can easily converse with you or their peers, that doesn't mean they aren't struggling to read the text in your class or understand the lectures that you're giving or the different things that you might be doing with language in your content classroom. The second principle is that multilingual learners need comprehensible input that is just beyond their current level of proficiency. This principle is very similar to what we've learned about from Vygotskyan theory about zone of proximal development. It's, it's very similar in that students are most going to benefit when they are given language at a level that is accessible but also challenges them. The reason that this is so important for teachers to recognize is that we often have um, this perception that students will just pick it up if they just are in the class or if they have recently arrived and are, are newcomers to English that they'll just, they'll just pick it up because they're young and they have flexible minds. But the reality is for second language acquisition to effectively occur any second language learner needs access to language that's either at the level what they can comprehend or slightly beyond so that they can grow. Um, I mentioned before that I speak German and I learned German from living in Germany for a year. I lived with a host family and spoke German with them. I dated a German boyfriend. I went to a German school and I was able to learn German quite well. However, before I went to Germany, I had studied German for three years. When I first arrived, I was in an intensive language camp. And even with that, I struggled quite substantially and never really became comfortable in school in German. Well, a few years later, I went to China to teach English at a university in Beijing. And I had decided, I was so excited because I was like, well, I lived in Germany for a year and I learned German, so I'm definitely gonna learn Chinese while I live in China. And I hired a tutor and I started reading books and I would turn the TV on and listen on the radio. And it eventually became really clear to me that I had no access to Chinese at a comprehensible level for me to start to develop proficiencies and push beyond those initial proficiencies. I learned enough Chinese to tell the taxi driver how to drive me home or to bargain at the market, but that was really all I ever was able to um, learn because it was so challenging and I had such a difficult time gaining access to Chinese at a level where I could understand and be pushed to grow. And it's so important that we provide that for our students. This often means doing things like making content comprehensible through graphic organizers, by providing providing um, access to key vocabulary. There's a lot of different strategies that you can use that will help multilingual learners have access to the content and the language of your class without it being too challenging for them to be successful. 
The third principle is that social interaction for authentic communicative purposes fosters multilingual learner learning. This is a really important piece to remember because oftentimes our classrooms are just too silent. Multilingual learners need opportunities to engage with content and language in meaningful ways and to interact with their peers to use language as so they can develop it as well as their conceptual understandings of the content. If you think about it, Maybe you've been in situations where you are learning a second language. How well did you learn that language when you were just doing worksheets versus when you're actually trying to talk to a, someone in the language that you were learning? You become very inventive and you try things out with language and you learn how to communicate and how to engage effectively. So this is really important that we design classrooms that allow for multilingual learners to talk and engage and use language for social interaction in authentic communicative ways. The next principle is that skills and concepts that are learned in the first language also transfer to the second language. This is really important for teachers to understand because we can encourage students to learn in their first language knowing that what they learn will be transferred to their second language as they develop their language proficiencies. Um, we have another module that goes over this in really important ways. It's called Learning Through Two Languages. You may want to um, explore that if this is interesting to you. But skills and concepts like literacy skills, for instance, understanding how to decode text, understanding how to draw meaning from text, understanding how to create meaning while writing a text, these very important literacy skills will transfer to any other language that a child learns. This is the reason why it is often encouraged and the research suggests best practice is to allow for students to develop their initial literacy skills in the language that they're most dominant in. This is why bilingual programs often have students who outperform the other students who were not in bilingual programs, especially if you look at their English proficiency over time. So students who are all multilingual learners, the students who are in bilingual programs and are developing skills in their native language while they're also learning English, over time have it on average outperform students who are multilingual learners and doing all of their schoolwork in English. And it's because even though it takes longer, those skills that a child learns in their native language will be transferred to English as they develop their English proficiencies. This is great news for teachers. You can encourage families to do work with students in their home language. You can encourage um, community engagement in languages other than English because that work will support what a child knows about your content and what they can do with your content as they're developing their English proficiencies. Now the final principle that we're going to talk about is that anxiety and performing in a second language can interfere with learning. This probably isn't so surprising, but when it comes to using a language that isn't a language you feel super confident in, it's really important for students to have a strong learning community where they feel safe, where they can take risks, and where they can be inventive with language. Unfortunately, we know from research that many multilingual learners actually don't feel safe to use English in classrooms because the other children make fun of their English or um, they simply don't feel like they have strong enough English proficiencies. So that can be a huge detriment to students actually using language, which is a big piece of learning the language. So everything you can do to create a safe learning environment for students to feel capable of taking risks and being inventive with their language is really important. You could also position all students in your classroom as language learners. What if the multilingual learners had an opportunity to teach the other students in the class about their languages and their proficiencies and help the other students gain empathy for what it means to be a language learner? There's a lot of ways that we can reduce the anxiety that students have in classrooms and certainly developing a strong community where everyone feels safe to take risks is a huge benefit for supporting second language acquisition. Thank you.